How's it going, everyone? Mr. Bowler back. Hoping that you're all well, looking after yourselves as per usual. Uh, I'm back with a video this week about uh, Metallica, um, specifically their Load and Reload albums. Um, I did a video a few months ago about Guns N' Roses' uh, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 albums. Now, my opinion of Load and Reload is the same as it is of Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion albums. And that's that they're way too long. And if you take all the good songs off of both albums, um, you'd have one really good album. If you take all the best stuff off of both albums, you'd have one really solid album. Um, uh, let's have a quick sip of coffee before we go any further. All good. Uh, now, a lot of people have the opinion of, uh, when it comes to Metallica, first four albums will do me, thank you very much. I'm not interested in anything else. Um, I do understand those opinions. I mean, let's face it, um, Metallica put out four absolutely amazing albums back in the 1980s. Um, we can all agree that absolutely stunning, that stunning thrash metal albums. Um, albums that I know like the back of my hand. Um, just, I know every note, every lyric, uh, just phenomenal stuff. However, I have continued to follow them throughout um, their entire career. They're a very, very important band to me. Um, got all their stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm just not going to sort of uh, jump off the train after the Black Album, because I really like that as well. Um, but these, uh, these albums really do divide opinion. Uh, both these albums are about 33 songs between them, so I've gone for... Um, or well, about 28 songs, I should say, sorry. And so I'm going to go for about a 14-track album that I've come up with that I think would be the perfect album between the two of them. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the albums um, we're talking about today. First up is a uh, Load from 1996. Um, yeah, I really like this, I've got to say. For me, this is easily the better of the two. Um, really, really good stuff on this. I remember this clearly when it came out. I'd literally just passed my driving test and went to town and bought it afterwards. Um, so yeah, this album is like 25 years old now, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, brilliant songs on this album, I've got to say. I mean, the opening one too of Ain't My Bitch and 2 by 4 are just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the House That Jack Built is a very good song as well. And Until It Sleeps. So the first four songs on the first LP... On side A, all good as far as I'm concerned. And then on side B, you've got uh, King Nothing, Hero of the Day and Bleeding Me. Again, that's all good stuff as far as I'm concerned. Get to the second LP and um, some of the quality starts to drop off a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, starts off with Cure on side C. That's a pretty good song. I don't mind that one. Uh, and then Poor Twisted Me. Um, not all that fussed on that one, it's got to be said. Um, Wasting My Hate is a song that I really like, you know. That's one of the, definitely one of the more rockier tracks on this album. And then you've got Mama Said, which I actually really, really do enjoy. It's got a definite country vibe to it. Now, the me of 10 years ago would absolutely hate the me now. I'd say, and I quite like that because it's got a country vibe. Because I actually loathe country music with passion. And even though I'm far from a country music fan, I've got a little bit more time for it these days than I used to have. But for me, we get to side four. And stuff like Thorn Within and Ronnie... Just don't care for those songs at all. Uh, nothing massively wrong with them, but definitely not up to, uh, to the scratch of the other songs that have already been on. I've already talked about. And it ends with the Outlaw Torn, which is pretty good. But still not massively fussed about it. Um, but not a bad song, it has to be said. Um, one thing that does stick out in my mind about this album when I was listening to it in the week is that um, I think Kirk Hammett's solo on this is quite lazy. Um, not a huge fan of the solos on this record. I mean, back in the day, he was uh, recording some absolutely phenomenal solos and um, kind of sounds like he was phoning in a bit on this, it has to be said. Um, but yeah, still a really good album that I really do enjoy. Lots of good stuff here. Obviously a big change in direction from the early days, but plenty of good stuff here that I do really enjoy. Same can't be said, though, for Reload. Um, there's good stuff on this, but there's some uh, stuff that definitely misses the mark by some considerable distance for me. Um, and this, this came out in 97. Um, this one starts well. Um, the first two songs, The Fuel and Memory Remains, I really like those songs. Devil's Dance is a great tune as well. And The Unforgiven 2, I also really like. 
And then you get to side B on the first LP. And you've got Better Than You, which is okay. I don't mind that one. Um, Sliver is okay. Carpe Diem Baby, um, again, it's just okay. You know, all the three songs on that side B of the first LP are just a riot. Um, then you start to get to stuff that kind of sucks a bit. Bad Seed on the side C. Where the Wild Things Are. Prince Charming. Um, they're okay. But then you get to Low Man's Lyric on their side D, which, as far as I'm concerned, can absolutely get in the bin. Uh, bloody awful song. Uh, Hurdy Gurdy on that one. No thanks. That could fuck right off. Um, but then you got Attitude, which is one of the best songs on this album, right towards the end of the album. And it finishes with Fixer. Um, now, the thing that stuck in my mind about this album when I listened to it is that nothing on this really excites me, um, even the good stuff. Uh, for instance, when you listen to something like Kill Em All, you can finish side A and then you can stick side B and you think to yourself, I've still got Phantom Law to go, I've still got No Remorse to go, I've still got Metal Militia to go. Not at any point when I'm listening to this album do I think to myself when I'm putting aside uh, the second LP on, yeah, I cannot wait to hear stuff like Fixer and Lone Man's Lyric. That don't fucking happen, ever. Uh, yeah, some really below par stuff on this one. Uh, when it's good, it really is quite good. But when it's not, it's bloody forgettable and quite frankly not that great at all. Um, but, so that's my opinion on Reload. So, what I would come up with for my own perfect low Reload album is uh, what I'm about to say. Now for me, on a side one... I'm talking like, say, six, seven songs per side. One LP, job done. I'd actually kick off with Ain't My Bitch, which is obviously the first song on load. And then The Memory Remains, uh, I'd go with up next. Um, that's another good song, I think. Then I'd just go with Devil's Dance. That's quite a nice chilled out number, a nice groove to it. Wasting My Hate to go with next. So that's another good up-tempo track. And then I go with The Unforgiven too. Um, I'm not going to lie, it's never ever going to sort of uh, compete with the first Unforgiven on the Black Album. And it's certainly better than uh, The Unforgiven that's on Death Magnetic. Then I go with King Nothing. And then to finish off uh, Side A, I'd go with Mama Said. A bit of a chilled song towards the end of the side. I think that will work quite well. And then for Side B, I'm going to kick off with 2 by 4 um, That's another song, like Devil's Dance, got a nice groove to it. Nice simple riff. I mean, the main riff and tra track's only about five, six notes. But it's really good. Um, it could almost be a status quo riff, to be honest. Then I go with Hero of the Day, um, another song I've always loved. Um, House of Jack Built, another great track. Then I'm going with Until It Sleeps. And then I put Attitude in, uh, fifth track on side B. And I'll stick uh, one of the epic songs, Bleeding Me, uh, second from last on side B. Um, that's definitely the best of the longest songs on the album for me on load. And then I've finished my perfect low reload album with Fuel. So yeah, I'd go with the uh, the first song on reload and put it actually right at the end. Instead of having one of these big, long-winded, um, epic songs at the end, go for a really rocking one. Um, and that's a great song. I really enjoy that one. So that would be my perfect low reload album, to be honest. As you can see, I'm pulling heavily from the Load album here. I think there's only about four songs from really that's making my list. Load, definitely the better album. But yeah, cut out all the filler, and I think that, that would be a really, really good album. And um, it would have been interesting to hear what that would have been like if it had just been released as it was. Right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, let me know what you think about my perfect load reload album what would yours be um do you even give these albums a time of day are you just a, a first four album kind of guy let me know get in touch uh yeah so leave me a comment uh hit the like button if you like this uh, video and if you like my content then please do subscribe to the channel it'd be very much appreciated i'll be back in a few days time with a vinyl update until then i'll catch you later look after yourselves uh, take care goodbye